everyone. Again, blessed, happy new year. You know what a year we just had, no, in 2022, if we just reflect, no, and really reflect and count our blessings. As we count our bliss, blessings, let us respond with gratitude and thanksgiving in our hearts for the Lord. You know, for more than two and a half years in this pandemic, last year, last March, we we're able to open our church to on-site worship. And last July, we are able to start our second service. No? And by God's grace, our different ministries are gradually opening up and meeting face-to-face -face again. I'd like to encourage everyone, especially those worshiping online, no? if we can go to our offices, if we can go to malls, we can go to restaurants, we can travel. I believe we can also come. You can also come and visit us so we can worship together uh, as one family here at Jubilee. Again, congratulations to our newly elected deacons, Charlie and Carl. And as leaders, we are again reminded to follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even though he was from above, he humbled himself in obedience to his Father's will. Paul reminds us, that as leaders, we are not to lord it over others, but to be servant leaders, willing and ready to serve. Again, I would like to encourage all of us to keep on praying for our church, keep praying for our leaders, our pastors, our congregation, to have a unity of mind and heart. No, there is no perfect church. There is no perfect leader. There is no perfect pastor or methods or strategies but in spite of our imperfection, our diversity, our coming from different backgrounds, we can show others that we can still be as one body, functioning in harmony and following the commandments of our Lord so that they may know that we are His followers by the way we love one another. You know, I believe in Jeremiah 29 11 says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future I would like to claim this promise because the Lord is a faithful promise keeper you know, that he has indeed great plans for us individually and us as Jubilee Evangelical Church especially this year as we celebrate our 60th anniversary but many promises, remember, many promises of the Lord are conditional. That we have to be doing our part first as well. Example, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be given to you. We have to seek his kingdom first. Abide in me, and my words abide in you. Then you can ask whatever you wish. So we have to do our part. No? If we want to claim God's promises... We must also be aware of doing our part as well. You know, our theme for this year is titled True Commitment. What is exactly is commitment? The meaning of commitment. It's being dedicated to something. There is a certain devotion, a certain faithfulness, fidelity, loyalty, or an attitude of someone who is so focused and dedicated that nothing else matters. You know, as we're brainstorming on how we can encourage our members to have true commitment, you know, we get answers like, we know we want our members to come during worship. We want them to come on time. We want them to commit to different ministries. We want them to come to our prayer meetings. We want our members, everyone, to be more mission-oriented committed to share the gospel, and many other commitments we would like you to have. You know, last Sunday, Rev. Hem gave a very powerful message on true commitment based on Colossians. It says, we must be committed to live, live at peace with one another, committed to be thankful in all things, to live in obedience in God's word, and to do everything in the name of our Lord. You know, these are all very important insights. And if we done properly, would we'll truly make our church grow. You know, but at the end of the day, 
all these commitments, while it's important and good, I believe will not last if we do not go back to the source of where our motivation comes, the heart. Remember in the past, we have made New Year's resolutions, no? diet, exercise, what to be having a more consistent, quiet time. You know, after several months or several weeks, or just even a few days, nawawala, di ba? I believe many of us wants to commit but have not succeeded because the heart of the problem, again, it's a problem of the heart. No matter how many encouraging messages you may have received, true commitment cannot happen if our hearts are not right with the Lord. If our hearts are not fully dedicated to Him, Brothers and sisters, if we look closely at our heart, honestly look closely at our heart, how much do we really love the Lord? Do we really love the Lord with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength? You know, our passage for today is very familiar. It's found in Mark 12, 28. It says, One of the teachers of the law overheard them debating, noticing that Jesus gave a good answer. He asked them, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. Love, we can do it at the same time. We can read it at the same time. No, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. You know, the teacher of the law or the scribe was not an expert of the legal law. He was not an expert of the law regarding the Roman law, no? but he was an expert on the Jewish religious law. He continued, no, let's continue in verse 32. He said, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all, more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices, more important than all the service we are giving. You know, everything starts from the heart. When we say, you know, I love my work, I love to study, I love to travel, I love my family, I love to sing, love to play basketball. You know, we can see in their passion how much time and effort they spend in pursuing those things that they like, right? You can see it there, okay? The Bible indicates that our heart is central. In Luke chapter 6, it says, the good man brings the good out of the good stored in his heart while the evil man brings out the evil from the evil stored in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth, his mouth speaks. So everything we have, everything that we are, every thought that we are having in our minds, you know, beginning with our innermost desires, our action starts where? From the heart. If we say we love the Lord, it can be seen how much time and effort we are spending pursuing the Lord. No? That's why we must guard our hearts and devote it to loving and serving the Lord. Question is, why is it called the greatest commandment? Why is this verse called the greatest commandment? Jesus said that this is the first and greatest commandment. Have you ever thought about it? It is the first and greatest commandment because it represents the heartbeat of all the other commandments. It's the reason why we follow his commandments. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So keeping his commandments is not legalistic. 
but because we love Him. Our motivation of obeying and doing all the commandments is because we love Him with all of our hearts, mind, and strength. Everything starts with loving the Lord. No, God's commandment is always for our own good. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you. You see? Be careful to obey so that it may go well with you. So there is a condition to his promises. No, we have to obey. And if you go to the last part of this this Bible verse, no, it says, These commandments that I give you today are to be where? In your hearts. These commandments today are to be placed in your hearts because our heart is the central of everything. The Lord gives much emphasis on the condition of our hearts rather than outward piousness. Okay? We all know that no? man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know? Let me quote some verses, other verses, to show how important the condition of our hearts is to the Lord. Proverbs 4.23, it says, Guard your heart with all vigilance, for from it are the sources of life. This is where our thoughts, our choices originate. So we have to guard our hearts very, very well. The second verse is Matthew 5, 8. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Again, talks about the heart, the condition of the heart. Third verse is found in Proverbs 21, 2. It says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs, again, the heart. You know, sometimes we can justify certain actions, no? make excuses why we are not serving or why we are not doing anything because we are busy and all these things. But at the end of the day, the God is the final judge of all things because God looks at the heart. God looks at our motives. The last verse is found in Psalm 44, 20, 20, uh, 21. This is even more uh, stern warning. It says, would not God discover this, what's in your heart? For he knows the secrets of your heart. That's very, very, it should remind us that God really looks at the heart. You know, there is no escaping God. He knows our motives. He knows our desires. And he knows our secrets. There's no escaping God. Even if we declare that we are loving him or we are serving him here, he is still looking at our hearts, whether it's true, whether it's genuine or not. You know, loving the Lord is foundational. If you love the Lord with all your heart, it increases our capacity to love others as ourselves. If we love the Lord with all of our heart and husbands, we can love our wives as Christ loves the church. If we love the Lord with all of our hearts and wives, we can submit to our husband as the church submit to Christ. We can maintain our purity. There is no more problem fulfilling the Great Commission. And if we truly love the Lord with all of our hearts, our main goal is to please Him. And therefore, we must, we will resist temptation. Because He keeps on reminding us, if you truly love me, obey my commandments. You know, going back to the conversation between Jesus and the scribe, Jesus recognized the wisdom of the scribe or the teacher of the law and says to him in verse 34, yeah, when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more question. Again, remember, God looks at the heart. Most teachers of the law or the scribes are more concerned for the strict observance of the law rather than God's intention behind the law. Outwardly, yes, they were fulfilling the requirements of the law. Could it be that Jesus' words, you are not far 
from the kingdom of God have something to do with the condition of his heart. Because outwardly, he was doing all the requirements of the law. Yet, he, Jesus is saying, you are still, you're not far, but you haven't. I think the words not far, you know, means probably you're almost there, but you're not there yet. You're on the right track, but you have not yet arrived. You're near the finish line, but you have not finished yet. There's still some distance. No? If the Lord were here beside us today, what would he say to us? Would it be possible that all these years of serving, of coming to church, worshiping, of offering, the Lord will still say to us, hey, you're not far from the kingdom of God. You're almost there, but you're not there yet. Like the teacher of the law, we may be very learned, knowledgeable. You know? Commit ourselves to do good works, but still not enough. Perhaps there was too much serving without a deep relationship, deeper relationship with the Lord. Perhaps the focus was more on their duty, assignment, or routine instead of doing ministry out of gratitude and thanksgiving. Or maybe there's too much activities, not enough quiet time for the Lord. Or perhaps we're a bit too passionate in the pursuit of knowledge that we forget that the end results of these pursuits is to show our love for the Lord. You know, if we if left on our own, you know, it's really too difficult to love the Lord with all of our heart. That's why in loving the Lord, we have three things to remember. Number one, we, have, we do not start with ourselves, but we are to start with God. You know, in 1 John 4.10, it says, If this is love, not that we love God, but that He first love us. So we cannot love God on our own unless we experience His love because He first loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice for us. How did He love us? Unconditionally, sacrificially, by sending His own Son to die in our place. Brothers and sisters, we keep we need to keep on reminding ourselves. We need to reflect, to think about how much He loves us. We need to meditate. And sometimes we take it for granted eh? that this sacrifice, see, we keep on hearing all over again. It's not that significant sometimes. We need to keep on reminding the significance and the importance of that sacrifice. We need to focus on God. Let that love sink it down to our hearts. You know, when we first came to know the Lord, some of us are on fire. No? We cannot wait to come to church, to volunteer, to join a lot of ministries, to fellowship with fellow believers. No? But however, along the way, because of the busyness of life, it has a way of crowding our hearts from the Lord. And oftentimes, we lost our focus. We need to ask for His grace and to be intentional. Think about His love every day. No? How He sacrificed Himself for our sins. And as we meditate on this, we ask the Lord to increase our love for Him. We can say, Lord, I want to love you with all of my heart, but I cannot do it on my own. Lord, help me increase my love for you. You know what? God is faithful. In Romans 5.5, 5, it says, God promised to pour out his love within our hearts. He promised to pour out his love within our hearts. And our love will grow. No? 
Having this kind of love is not natural. It's supernatural. It's a response by the Holy Spirit who dwells in our hearts. This kind of love cannot be faked. Sometimes we can act very religious, but this kind of love cannot be faked. Again, because God looks at the heart. How much time we spend with the Lord would indicate how much important my relationship with Him is. Loving the Lord should not start with ourselves, but again, start with meditating and thinking of how much He loved us and reflect on His love for us. Let His love fill our hearts, and because of that, we can love Him back. The second one is we need to recognize which area of our lives are competing with loving the Lord. In other words, which are the idols that we are entertaining in our lives? No? Sometimes, no, we say many things or people or activities which are not sinful, naman, but these things take our attention away from the Lord. Sometimes it's our family. Sometimes it's our relationships, our work. And sometimes it's even ministries. We may be so busy serving the Lord that we have no more time for Him. You know, in Revelation chapter 2, Jesus affirms the church in Ephesus. He affirms their positive actions. Yeah, 2 and 3. He says, uh, as I read, you follow me in the, in the verses in front. No, he says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate evil, uh, wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them to be false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. So the church in Ephesus had many things in their favor. They would not tolerate evil men and had the courage to put preachers to the test. Hindi lang niya accept kung sino sino mga preachers, but willing to put them to the test. They even tested those who say that they are apostles and had found them to be imposters. So they are so dedicated to the truth. Not only was the truth preached, the brethren persevered and labored for the Lord and had not grown weary. Talaga on, on fire, no? No, if the church of Ephesus were here today, probably would say that this is a vibrant, growing church. Their soundness of doctrine, they will never settle for anything but the truth. And today we might say that this church is the model of what all churches are to be like. And the leaders in the congregations are hardworking and persevering. Ganda, no? But if you notice the next verses, no? we see the Lord gave this very stern warning. Listen carefully. No? As this warning is also for all the other churches, including our church as well. The Lord said, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. It's a very stern warning. No? If you do not repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place. So what was the church? What were they not doing that Christ had to give them this very stern warning? What were they not doing? They, they, they've done so many good things and good works. They had forsaken what? Their first love. Again, what is the greatest commandment again? Love the Lord with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. We can see this church doing a lot of ministry, a lot of good works, a lot of serving. But their motivation, according to Jesus' warning, is other than loving the Lord. 
the Lord warned these brethren that unless they repented and come back to their first love, he would be what? Removing their lampstand from its place. This lampstand was a symbolic of the Lord's presence and his recognition of that congregation as belonging to him. That church is serving him greatly. They have a sincere commitment to the work, but they do not have that sincere, true commitment to the greatest commandment. You know, our service, our worship, our sacrifices, although important and admirable, would be meaningless to the Lord if we do not do it out of love, out of loving the Lord with all of our hearts because God looks at the heart. So religious or, Christ, or church activities, apart from loving the Lord, is empty ritual. It is possible to pray and to sing, to attend a worship service, or give an offering yet. Yet, we have not really experienced the presence of the Lord. It's a possibility. Perhaps some of us have difficulty loving the Lord because in reality, we have never really encountered Him to experience His love, His forgiveness. No, if we truly understood the extent of His love, His sacrifices and forgiveness, it will propel us to love him back. There's this story. There's a young man who visited an old pastor. And he wanted, when he arrived there, he asked the, pastor, the old pastor, he said, we know that all through these years, you have lived a life of faith and integrity in spite of all the challenges you have in life. What is your secret? The old man said, come here, sit beside me. Let's look at this wonderful view. One day I was sitting there, and then suddenly a rabbit jumped out. And my dog saw that rabbit and started to chase that rabbit, barking along the way. Pretty soon that barking attracted a lot of other dogs. And we can see that beautiful race. You know? A lot of dogs were running around. But after a while, all the other dogs gradually gave up. Only my dog remained in the chase. That young man is the secret to the, an uh, is the answer to the question you're asking. The young man was perplexed. How can chasing a rabbit, a dog chasing a rabbit, be the answer to my question? Young man, you failed to ask the right question. The question to ask is, why did the other dogs give up the race? And the answer is simple. Because they have not seen the rabbit. They were only attracted by the barking of my dog. Like other dogs who were attracted by the park barking, perhaps some of us here are attracted to come to church because of our friends or maybe an invitation or family tradition as others may not personally as that other dogs may not personally saw the rabbit some of us may not have personally encountered the living Christ that is why sometimes we feel ourselves so we give up so easily we're not on fire for the Lord or we're just satisfied just to go through the motions in the day of judgment, we do not want to hear the words of the Lord saying, yeah, you are almost there. That will be too late. That's the day of judgment. Malapit ka na, pero hindi ka umabot. We don't want that. Have we lost our first love? That we are serving, worshiping Him out of duty and not out of love? God is so serious with the condition of our hearts. It says, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Today, we might realize that I'm not really loving the Lord with all of my heart. Sometimes I come to worship service. I'm not excited to join in the praise and worship. And all these things. 
We come with a critical attitude. We don't really have a consistent quiet time and prayer time. And probably it's time to evaluate if we're truly loving the Lord with all of our hearts. Loving the Lord with all our hearts starts with God. We must have that encounter with Him, repent, and ask Him to come into our lives as Savior and Lord. If we never have that encounter, our hearts will never be transformed to be able to love Him with all of our hearts, mind, and strength. And for those who have lost their first love, only you know. What is your motivation in serving Him today? We need to go back, come back to Him, repent, think about His love. Ask the Lord to pour out His love in our hearts. Number two, recognize and identify what areas of our life is competing with loving our Lord. Need to seek first His kingdom. And the third one is, Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Our theme for this year is true commitment. The church in Ephesus made a commitment to be excellent in other aspects, yet they were warned by the Lord that they have lost their first love. Brothers and sisters, let's not make that same mistake. For pastors, leaders, volunteers, everyone, let us make the greatest commandment of the Lord, of loving the Lord with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, our first and foremost commitment to the Lord this year and the year beyond. And if we do that, everything else will follow if our motivations are right. Remember, God looks at our heart. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your message today that above all things, we should love you with all of our hearts. Lord, we want to, Lord, but it is so very difficult because there are so many things that is competing for my heart. Perhaps today we realize that we really do not love you with all of our hearts. And some of us may have lost our first love. Some of us may have lost our purpose, why we are serving and worshiping. Lord, we want to change. Help me, Lord, to be able to have a heart of love, of gratitude, of thanksgiving. And as our love for you increase, all the other commandments will no longer be an issue for me. Because if we truly love you, we would do your commandments. And this following prayer is for those who have not yet really encountered the Lord. And perhaps today will be a real good day to open your hearts to Him. Lord, I realize that I really do not have a true encounter with You. I'm just going through the motions of coming to church and all the other things. Lord, I am repenting of all my sins. I want to accept your mercy and forgiveness in the way you provided for my salvation through the cross of Jesus. I want to open my heart to you and Lord, accept you as my Lord and Savior by faith. And from now on, you will be the Lord and Savior of my heart and as I submit to you. Lord, transform my heart, my mind, and may all of us here make a commitment, a true commitment to the greatest commandment of loving you with all of our hearts. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all rise for the benediction. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. And may we all make that greatest commandment of loving the Lord with all of our hearts, our true and highest commitment for 2023 and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's be seated and just spend a few minutes reflecting on the message today. Loving the Lord with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength.